Hi everyone, it's Jen Matat for Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft and we are here tonight. I'm going to be showing you how to create your own custom necklace from some materials. I'm going to zoom in, you can see this is the necklace that I made. And what I'm using tonight is our Lux colors, some of those, and um, featuring our um, paper crafter crayons, like these things here, that are so much fun. So you know how to color with crayons and you know you might um, be using them in different ways, but I am going to use them by melting them a little bit to create some very vibrant like printmaking effect. So we're going to make a mono print with the paper crafter crayons and then we're going to turn it into a necklace. So you're going to be seeing it used in a very different way. So I'm going to kind of explain some of the tools that you're going to need um, for this one before we get started. And again, if you have any questions, Rita's here to moderate. So um, if I'm working and I don't hear you or see you with a question, she can hopefully answer that or I will quick look up and try to get to everybody's questions. Okay, so I'm using a form um, from this is a chipboard uh, chipboard background from uh, Umwow Studios Umwow Studios right here so there's different she has different ones um, uh, but this is what it, what they look like they come in these different packages and I have this one which is kind of cool and for tonight since I used my gear one, I'm going to use a circle one that we have here. Okay, so it's kind of similar, but I'm going to be doing a little bit different one because, you know, I don't want two of the same necklaces. Of course, I can make another one exactly like that, but, you know, I like to be a little different. And then our background is going to be music paper. Um, I get all this sheet music from my music teacher at school when she's done with stuff she'll throw out a bunch of things and I'm like no don't throw that out let me have it so I'm like always picking the trash or now she knows and she just gives it to me but um we're going to use the Lux to add color and we're also going to use some of the stencils our new mixed media stencil pack here okay so we're going to be using some of those plus the the tried and true one from the original pack that has the circles. I like that one a lot. So we'll be using that. And um, those are the materials mostly for tonight. But I'm going to show you, there's a couple other things that you'll want to have if you're going to replicate this. You want a hot plate or a skillet, but you don't want to use it again for cooking. <laughs> so I got mine at a thrift store. It was just a, you know, Salvation Army store or garage sailing you can get a ton of them so I'm gonna pan down and show you that okay and you can see from over here I'm gonna right over here can you see Let's see if it'll focus on it so there's the texture lux come on all right well maybe it won't focus on there if I don't go closer all right so this is my skillet you want to turn um, the skillet up, and I have a, uh, I'm trying to get so you can see a view of it. Let's see if I can pan up. There you go. There's the dial here on these skillets, and you can buy a new one. You know, you can buy them pretty cheap at like Walmart or whatever. But it, this one is nice because it has the temperature on it. You don't want the one that just has like low, medium, high. You want one that has the actual temperature, okay? Because you don't want to go above 200 degrees. All right, actually like 150 is probably a good temperature. If you go too high, you know, it's not um, good for the wax to do that. It creates a haze when it dries. So, um, and that's any kind of good beeswax and materials like that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to just break down when it gets too hot. So for this one, you know, when you want to keep it around 150-ish, okay? So um, what I did is... To start with, I'm going to start with the um, the form, and I'm going to let this heat up for a minute because I just turned it on. And what I'm going to do for this one is, and I'm trying to just 
Sorry about moving her things around. I just want to be able to make sure you guys can see everything. Okay. So here I'm going to make the, um, the background of this. And I'm going to color it with the Lux so that it can dry while we're doing the other parts. So I'm going to take this. And it's just a chipboard shape that you can do. And it's just, I love this craft color. But I also like when I'm doing jewelry, I want to make sure that I have, you know, some little bling or some kind of, uh, you know, sparkle on here. So with the Lux, it's going to give that metallic look to it. So using a foam brush, I'm going to start with the silver Lux. And of course, I have, oh, there we go. I guess I'm strong, stronger than I thought. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the Lux. And I'm kind of going to make sure you don't want it blobby because it gets stuck in all the little crevices. It is pretty um, thick. Okay. Why is this not focusing? There we go. I'm trying to get it to better focus for you guys. Okay. Difficulties. All right. There's the original. That's a little better. All right. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out which way I want it to be for the top. And I think for this one, necklace, I'm going to use these as the hangers. So I'm, this is my top and this is the bottom. So it's kind of going to be like a fade out. So I'm just going to brush on some of the, or dab on some of the Lux on here to cover the craft. And actually it might be easier for cleanup purposes. I'm going to put a paper towel out here just so that I don't have to keep wiping up everything. I can just throw away the paper towel. So the top half, I'm going to just use the silver and just brush it on. Get a good little coat on here. And it, it does kind of get, it's some, since it's thick, it does kind of get stuck in there. So make sure that you kind of dab it off before you brush it, or at least pounce it a little bit so that it's not getting in the crevices too much. Because I do want sort of a smooth application. And once I get it on there, then I can kind of brush it a little more. So this one... And the nice thing is these don't dry all that quickly, so you can blend, which I'm going to do in the middle, is kind of blend the two together to create kind of a ombre effect. All right, so you can really see it's so shimmery and shiny, that metallic. Yeah, it's, it's like a very thick... Um, the Lux is almost like a texture paste. It's really thick, but it's creamy. It's more creamy. So it's kind of a, like a very thick acrylic paint, but with the metallic sheen to it. And you can really make it thick and it'll hold that texture. All right, so I've got a majority of my silver. You can see it's really coating nice, very nicely. All right. So now I'm going to add some of the gold at the bottom. Okay. So at the bottom, I'm going to get some of this gold and then I'm going to overlap the two. And this chipboard, oh, this chipboard just handles this beautifully. It just, it soaks up a little bit, but not like some chipboards, it's really going to soak in. This sits beautifully on top. And the Lux won't wipe off of it. It'll be permanent. Okay, so I'm adding the gold. You Can can you see it? Oh, yeah, you can see the shimmer. See that? Ooh, so pretty. I love this Lux. All right, so I'm getting a good coating at the bottom of the gold, and I'm kind of overlapping in the middle. So I might go back and forth and add a little more of the silver to mix together. All 
and you get this overlapping and it kind of creates this I don't know what what kind of metallic but it's like a toned down gold in the middle all right a little bit more down here of the gold all right and then I'm gonna let that dry while I'm doing my mono print okay so I'll hold this up you can see it look at it so you can see that effect see how it fades from the the silver down to the to the gold yeah and I love the copper too I just happen to like how the silver and the gold kind of mix together here if you could do copper and gold or silver and pearl you could color your pearl into a different color and do a different metallic fade out look so this we're gonna let that dry Close this up. I know I love copper. Copper and pearl, that would be really pretty. Okay. And actually, I usually throw away my foam brushes, but kind of getting low on them. So for this purpose, I'm just going to use a baby wipe to kind of clean off a little bit. It's not going to clean it all the way off, which is okay. Just the majority of it. And I'll set that aside. Okay, we're going to get using the hot wax now. So I'm going to pan over here to the pan. No pun intended. Well, sort of a pun intended. All right. Now I am going to do a little bit of um, drawing on the hot plate directly so I didn't treat it with anything um, you don't have to if it's metal or if it's that um, Teflon or whatever that doesn't stick um, it's perfect okay the older ones if it's rusting a little I would definitely um, you know use a metal plate you can buy them at encaustic shops um, or online this is a aluminum plate and you can get them in a variety of sizes and then you just place it on there and it heats up and you can just do your design right on this plate so that's another option if you have an older skillet that you and you don't want to ruin your skillet but you want to use it to heat or use a hot pat hot um, plate you can use a metal aluminum um, I think this is called an aluminum plate and I, I got it at um, Encausticos online which is an encaustic company and it was pretty inexpensive so that's just something you know if you if you have a skill you don't want to go out and buy a new one or you have one that's really old and you just want to use it as a heating source you can have that so for me I'm just gonna go right on top and I'm going to be printing this on to the design okay so I'm telling you now because I get kind of involved in my coloring and making that I forget to tell you what I'm doing okay so I'm going to start, and you can layer the colors, and I just picked out a variety of them. I may not use all these, um, but, um, oh yeah, don't get it on your clothes. You know what? I should have my smock on. Thank you for reminding me, Rita, because if I get this on me, my nice dress, probably not a good idea. All right, so I'm going to put my, my dirty smock on. All right, now I think I'm ready. Got my smack. Okay, so I'm going to just do an abstract kind of design because this is going to be a background. Um, if you can see the original, um, I'm looking at the bright colors here. That's the, that is the crafter crayons, the uh, paper crafter crayons. They're really bright when you do this technique. All right. So I'm just doing the background, and then I'm going to add more to it later. So let me see. I'm going to go kind of at an angle here for you. And I'm just going to add, lay down some color. And you could draw, you know, something. But if, you know, you're looking through these little windows in this opening in here. So I'm only going to get a portion of this, which is okay. So I'm going to keep it kind of abstract. So now when I am touching the skillet with these crayons, they are melting a little bit down. 
if they melt really fast, then you may have your skillet up too high. All right, but it should become very creamy and easy to, to draw with. Okay, so let's see, let's use some orange in this one. Okay, very creamy, they can layer nicely. And I'm just kind of doing this design. Kind of getting some colors down. Yeah, it doesn't come out of clothes and I've got my silk dress on. Yeah, I came from work. I was gonna go to karate, but I didn't tonight because I was like, yeah, I don't wanna get all sweaty. Plus I, you know, after running a half marathon this weekend, I need a break. So this is my break, my art break. My relaxing time. So you guys are my, you guys are my uh, rest day. You're helping me rest. This does relax me a lot. This is so relaxing, nice and warm and toasty. So here I am getting this kind of very um, stripey kind of look to it. And I'm just going to keep layering colors. So maybe I want some gold in here. The gold is kind of shimmery. It's not going to give you the same shimmer as the Lux, but it's it has a little bit of a shimmer quality to it, especially when you do the print. So and I gotta wipe this one. Sometimes I get other colors in here, and it wipes right off while it's wet, while it's kind of warm. Or you could just do it in a different part of the skillet and heat it up, and then clean it off. Okay, what else? Hmm, maybe we need a little bit of darker color. So, maybe I'll do some, some circles in here, really scribbly. A sketchy quality. Something like that. Yeah, it's gonna have a, a very gloss, a glossy, um, well, not super glossy, but it's gonna have a, sh a shine to it. But I love that you can layer these nicely. And it's very, has a very painterly kind of effect to it. It's almost like painting on the skillet. It does have that paint quality to it. All right, and then every once in a while I want to check to make sure that I'm creating a wide enough area of color. So I just hold up my form to this so that I can see if I need to add some more or if it's not tall enough to cover that space. So this is very therapeutic. My last one, the one, the original one I did in greens and browns and yellows, and this one I'm doing in warm colors. So I'm kind of just like keep layering them. All right, I think I'm almost done. All right, let me just double check it again. And it looks good for the, the width of it. There's a little more on this side. Okay, now I'm going to print it. So here's the fun part, is I am going to um, put the paper right over the design, making sure that it's right where I want it to be. And then I'm going to use a brayer. This is a rubber brayer um, to roll over it to print it. Okay, you don't, want to, you don't want to touch it with your fingers. You'll burn yourself. Okay, so this is not really for children without supervision. You definitely want supervision if you're doing this with kids. Okay, like I would do this with my kids at school, but I would have to do it in a small group and supervise and then have them do this with being careful not to touch edges and things. Okay, so here's your warning. Don't touch the skillet with your fingers. Use the brayer. All right, don't use a foam brayer. Make sure you have a hard rubber brayer, okay? You can buy these at craft stores in the print making section or the stamping stamp making sometimes they have them there this one is speedball has has one okay so once you think you've gone over every 
part and you should see you can see it kind of showing through the paper a little bit okay then you're going to carefully pull it off and there is your print so you have a one-of-a-kind copy of what you did on the skillet on your paper now I recommend that you don't you use um, paper that's a little thinner on the thin side that has um, you know that's not shiny you don't want to use a glossy paper you want uh, this one uh, um, works really nice on um, use sheet music um, newspaper newsprint uh, ledger paper works great um, you know pages out of a book that you rip out would be great you can use that um, cardstock's a little too thick I think you can experiment with different types of cardstock. You might find a lighter weight one that works better. I find it better when I can, you know, peel it off a little easier or have it have it really um, pressed down nice and flat. All right. So, um, oh, are we delayed? Sorry, but um, this is the the background. Okay. So before we go on to anything else, I'm gonna put these aside over here and then we are going to add some of the Lux onto this background before I start you know cutting it out over here all right, so let me go back over this way all right oh one more thing to clean this I buy these little hand towel things in huge packages at like the dollar store or at Walmart or whatever or Target and then you can just wipe it right off. So it's thick enough that you're not gonna burn yourself wiping it off. And then I just toss these out. I don't keep them. So they're, they're like so cheap. They're, you can get them in like packs of 12 or 20 for very little. So, and it takes it right off of there nice and easy. And then I'm ready to go for the next time. Okay, so there, that's how you clean it. All right. And remember, this is going to be recorded so you guys can go back and watch it again. Okay, so here we're going to add the Lux. So I'm going to use um, silver. On, I think I'm going to do silver for this one on the background. And I'm going to make polka dots on here. Now, I'm going to use my foam brush to kind of pounce it through the, the stencil, but you could use a, if you wanted it thicker, you could use a palette knife like we have in our toolkit. All right, so you could really get it thick in here if you want. I'm going to keep it fairly low, and when I pounce it with the, the foam brush or a foam applicator, um, I'm going to get a little bit of that foam texture too, which is nice. I always like a little more texture. So... I'm just going to do this in some of the places. So I'm pouncing on the stencil. Does everybody know that word, pouncing? I remember stenciling walls at one point where I would pounce with the big pouncer. All right. And so I just have, I'll hold it up so you can see, maybe you can see that texture. See the, the texture left behind by the foam applicator? has a little bit of a texture to it. So I'm just gonna do a few more areas, kind of randomly adding some in so they'll peek through those openings. Just gives it a little more shine, a little more interest in our art, in the artwork. You know, the colors are so vibrant that you're gonna have this stand out just a little bit and give it a little bit more of an oomph. And you could do multiple layers of stenciling. So instead of just doing all dots, I could do dots, then I could add something else on top. Depends how much of the color you want to cover up. Okay, so that's not too bad. I'm thinking I like that. So you can see, let me hold it up. Can you see it? Nice texture with, with this, and it's still pretty wet, so. All right, so I'm going to just dry this a little bit. Again, if you use a, a dryer or a heat gun, don't hold it in one place. The crayon will remelt. So be careful you're not overdoing it. Okay, so I'm not gonna hold it in one place too long. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a drying 
sweep here. Okay, so um, now the biggest thing that probably will take the most of your time in this whole technique is cutting out around the edge. All right, now you can use an X-Acto blade, you can, you know, do whatever is easiest for you. I'm Right now I'm just kind of trying to figure out where I want this design to peek through. So I like this area right here. I'm going to... I'm going to use that. So I'm going to take a uh, pencil and I am going to trace, oh, I'll use my mechanical pencil here because it gets a nicer line and I'm going to trace around the outside. So here's where, you know, having a very complicated uh, chipboard pattern is going to make your life a little more difficult when cutting things out, but not impossible. It just takes you a little long. If you like to fussy cut, that's good because this will be a little bit of fussy cutting. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use a pair of scissors to cut out this, and then you could always use an X-Acto blade to just get, a, you know, little spots if you need it. So I'm just tracing around this shape. So this is probably the most challenging part of this. The rest is fairly easy. If you have the tools, it's very simple and fun to do. Okay, so once I got that shape, I can take my scissors and cut out this shape. And I'm gonna go just inside that line because when I traced it, it made it just slightly bigger. I'm kind of cutting just just inside the line. And it, again, it may not be perfect. I'm not worried about it too much. I can trim it down with an X-Acto when I get it glued on. Okay. Again, this is the, the most... You have to be patient and cut. It's very relaxing. Again, I need this to my is perfect for today. I love to fussy cut. Fussy cutting doesn't bother you. Some people it makes them crazy. It makes me crazy at times. I have to be in the right mood and have I happen to be in the mood tonight. It just it's just making me it's, it's nice to focus on something else. It takes my mind off other things. And don't worry if it's not exactly perfect. Again, I'm going to have to probably trim it a little bit once I get it glued. Or sand it or whatever. You know, if you have those little tools to help you sand the, in, you know, the little corners and stuff, that works too. What would it get? What would happen if you melted gelatos? Well, you can melt them in the um, microwave in some water. <laughs> you have to be in the mood. Yeah, um, because I, I warm them up and melt them into water when I'm making my sprays. So I usually just put them in a little dish, you know, shave off some and melt it a little bit. Don't put it in too long, but just melt it and that helps it to like mix with the water better. Like you get a better, you don't get the, as many chunkies in there. So you can do that. It's just, you know, I've never done it on the skillet. I don't know quite what would happen. Maybe I'll have to Yeah, it just kind of like merges into the paper when you use the heat gun. 
I've never done it on the skillet though. Should we try it? Yeah, it sits on top. It doesn't, they don't absorb in the, this is a wax crayon versus something like the gelato that um, absorbs into it is water-based. All right, here we go. There's that. So hopefully I did a pretty good job. Yep, pretty good. I got a few edges I need to just trim when I get it glued on. All right, so but you get an idea. You can see the background here. All right, now I'm going to use a liquid glue to adhere it down. You want something that's going to adhere to the wax. So a good, strong um, liquid glue, a mixed media glue um, is good. I'm using a three-in-one beacon three-in-one glue, which is kind of leaking all over the place here. Oops. I can catch you up. Yep, remember, I'm gonna, it's, this is going to be recorded, so you can go back and watch the whole thing. The whole, from the beginning. All right. But if you're just coming on here, this is what, we're making a necklace, a piece of jewelry, using a chipboard uh, shape from, this is from Umwow Studio, uh, this gear one. And then for this one, I'm using a circle for tonight, a circle one. And then I, I made a mono print on the skillet with the paper crafter crayons. So I just drew on the skillet and then made a print. So you can see all those details later when you play it back at your leisure. All right, so this three-in-one uh, is pretty stringy. It's almost like liquid hot glue. You know how hot glue has all those strings. I'm not too worried about them showing because I can just kind of wipe them away after. So I'm just getting them, getting some glue on here. That's something that's going to stick down permanently. All right, so I'm getting all as much of the of the perimeter as I can in the inside so it sticks all the way down to the paper. I'm not a very neat gluer, so you know, we'll clean it up after. Okay, so I got some goopy glue on here. And I just take my finger in the openings and get rid of the, the strings before I stick it down. Kind of not a technical thing, but this is how I do it. Hopefully, you might have a better way, but <laughs> mine's easy, just easy. All right, so then you match it up to your cutout and get it to uncurl here and stick it down. The least, the less cleanup I have to do, the better. So I try not to make a huge mess. I don't like to clean. So if you get a little glue, you can use a, an eraser to kind of pull it off, like I use the tip, the back of my pencil eraser just to get it loose. It comes right off. Okay, pretty good. All right. Yeah, loose glitter. Oh, man. I thought my husband was going to lose it on me one night when I had glitter everywhere. All right. Um, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit on the edges with a, with a knife just to get my corners. There's a few corners that I didn't quite cut small enough. Again, the fussy cutting part. So some of you who like doing this part, this will be like therapy. For some of you, it might be a torture. For me, eh. if I had to cut the whole thing out with this knife, I think I would lose my mind. But for this, it's not a bad. I'm just doing a little trimming. Just a few corners that I hate to uh, be so stuffy with you guys. I'm like, allergies must be just starting up here. We're just getting warm. 
and things are blooming for the first time and my allergies are going full force. So I'm a little stuffy tonight. Kind of sound like a frog. It's always when I'm needing to sound clear when I am the least clear. And stuffy. All right, so I'm almost done trimming. The last thing I'm gonna do, and I, before I put it all together, I mean, I've put it all together, but embellish it. You can embellish however you want. I use some metal pieces that go well with it. And um, I'm gonna give a good coating to the back with Lux because the Lux is a, an acrylic base and it will give it some um, protection from when you're wearing it. So you could, while you're cutting out the shape, you know, with scissors, you could cut a felt background or use, um, you know, a velour, you know, paper background where it has some kind of texture to it or, or softness to it. Um, I just like to coat it with the Lux because I just think that it would give it, it gives it, first of all, it makes it metallic. Second of all, it'll protect it from wearing. You know, these are special kind of necklaces that you're probably not going to wear, you know, somewhere where you're going to be sweating a lot or out in the rain, but since it is paper, but um, giving it a coating of the Lux, I think will definitely protect it. Plus you got the crayon, which isn't going to wash away or reactivate unless it gets hot. So it's pretty safe material to use for wearing. You could coat it also with a gel medium if you wanted. Alright, so now I've got this all trimmed. Now I could cut out an opening if I wanted to, you know, cut out a little opening in here or whatever. I did that on one of them, but um, for this one I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to coat the back with the Lux. So just flip it over. And I'm going to give it a coating with the silver tonight. Just a nice, even coating. Just for protection and to just even out the back. And that way, when this dries, it'll have a nice, you know, more of like a metal look to the back for jewelry. A faux, faux metal. Yeah, an underwater look. Yep. I had um, this netting one, which would be probably a nightmare to cut out but it's so pretty this would make a nice necklace too you know but cutting around that would be a little so I kind of didn't do that tonight because that would take me a lot longer but that might be a challenge for me to try and I like the idea of the blues with the silver that's a great idea for underwater like a very summery beachy kind of look Almost done, and then I'm going to let that dry for a minute. And then I'll just explain how I embellished and added the chain. Um, you can buy chains really, like, separately. Okay, so that's going to dry for a second. Um, you can buy them separately at the craft store, and... I, what I do is um, I snip one of the little rings in the chain off about halfway. Depends on, you know, if your form is uneven or whatever. You can kind of gauge where it's going to attach to. And you want to get some jump rings for jewelry, jewelry making. All right, so um, I got, for this one I'm using silver because the main color 
or the main, you know, one of the main colors is silver. But you could choose any one you want. Any, they come in all different metallic finishes. So for this one, I'm using a silver. And I've already snipped the end. Here's one that came in the package. This package had three different chains, so I could actually use it three different, three different ones and pick which one I wanted. I want this one for the, because it's kind of skinnier and fine, but I could use the big chunky one if I wanted, which is what I did on a different one here. This one is, uh, the original one I used is more of a antique gold. This is more of an antiqued silver. All right. So what I did is I just found the center from the clasp and I took a wire snip or my pliers and I just cut it off, cut that one little ring off. All right. Let me get rid of these over here. And so now you can see that it's separated. So this is these are the parts that are going to attach to the to the um, top of the necklace. This is still wet, so I'm just going to hold it. But this would attach to here, and this one's going to attach over here, right? Or maybe this one over here. Yep, here to here on the ends. All right, and I'm just going to use jump rings to attach them. Okay, so let me show you the one that I made so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so you can see that um, I attached the end here. I punched a little hole in the paper part, and I added the jump ring with the pliers. And I added a little, a smaller jump ring to the end of the, the chain to attach to this one. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. And same thing on the side. Okay, make sure you get your jump rings the same color as your chain, or it'll look kind of strange unless you want a mixture of, of metals. Okay, now this, these are some metallic or metal little um, charms or... This one was a metal embellishment that came in another package. So I added those and I just glued these on with the mixed media glue that I had to embellish them. But you could hang, you know, little charms off if you wanted. You could put like a little word charm on here. And you, yeah, you could see the paper did not buckle. I think if it was really wet and you didn't let the glue dry properly or you didn't... Um, glue it down enough, it might buckle a little bit when you're painting with the Lux. But the Lux really isn't wet wet, it's more thick wet, like paint, like a thicker, not quite like paint. So it, it does lay it down pretty nice. Alright, so it's not like watery thick. And look at how shiny it gets when it's dry. So this one's dry, super dry. Alright, and this one's ready to wear. So I, I'm going to wear this with a little black dress, you know, you could have a, if you have a steampunk kind of look to it, you know, this would be an awesome piece. And I, I wear these out and I get people asking where I got them and they kind of are amazed when you say you made them. I made it. It's mine. All right. So that was a quick 45 minute lesson on how to do this. And I've done other ones. I know I did one on another thing here. Here's another one. This one isn't with the paper crafter crayons, but this is uh, gelatos on a canvas paper. So this is just another Umwa Studio one, and I cut out little openings. I hung little charms. You can see the little charm hanging here with the jump ring of the little bee there. Yep, and here's another one that I glued in. See that? So that's another one. I like doing these. These are fun. Custom. You can make your own custom jewelry. So I hope you enjoyed this version of our Ustream for Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft. And I hope you'll join us again the next time. And I hope you have a great night. Thanks. I'm going to... Um, stop the video and then you can rewatch this as you're making it 
anytime and visit our blog for more ideas. And this is Jen Matat signing off. Thanks.